over with our Bible conference. I'm so glad you're here this morning. We've had, uh, of course, our Friday evening and our Saturday evening time in the Word of God with Pastor Alex Chippy, and we continue this morning. I know this for you is regular Sunday, just coming to Sunday morning church, but we've been having, of course, this before you to let you know we're having a Bible conference this spring, and it's really a special time over the last few years and different times in the spring. This is a, a special one. We haven't had a Bible conference like this in a few years, and we will never have, I don't think, anyone like uh, this one this evening after our service this evening and going home and taking a little break. I hope you come back. 5.30 will be an ordination service for Alex Chippy, and we're looking forward to uh, ordaining him out of First Bible Baptist Church and sending him out out of your church with his wife and children to go to Lusaka, Zambia, be a church planter, a missionary, and a pastor in a church there. So you are part of something. We are part of something extra special. I heard it's in the Acts of the Apostles, and that's what we ought to do. And we want to oftentimes uh, uh, maybe superlative eyes. Is that a word? Not really. But maybe just bring extra superlatives to the things that actually to God are right on the money. They're just the simple things that God wants to do, which actually turn into the serious things that we have been talking about in the Word of God the last couple of days and again this morning. One of those things that we talked about before I pray is this. Uh, I loved in the serious things and, and uh, Pastor Alex speaking last evening said something to this uh, effect. He said, you know, uh, it's oftentimes, and you may have heard this a few times in your life, but looking at the life of Paul, it may be easier for us to die the physical death than to live for Jesus Christ. But on the other side of that, he said, who you live for is who you will die for. Who will you die for? Will you die for the Lord Jesus Christ? Or will you die for yourself? And that's a powerful, convicting statement, of course, out of the Word of God. And as we sing these beautiful songs and really get ramped up in praise and we're worshiping the Lord and say, with every beat of my heart, with every breath, I will praise you. I will live for you. May that be true of us as we get through this morning service, through our, um, through our ordination service this evening, as we go out after gathering together, may we be so much better in the Lord Jesus Christ and so much different because the serious things of God are the serious things of us. Let's pray together and we'll continue and worship. Our uh, worship team is gonna sing a beautiful song. I want you to track in, bow your heads, kind of I do this sometimes, I did it last day. Why don't you just clear your mind, clear your heart. Think of those song words, those lyrics you just sung, just in that song that you just sung about the Lord and singing unto him and, and really focus in on his incredible glory that Jesus is worth it all. Our gracious Father, our heavenly Father, our Father in heaven, thank you this morning together and corporately and collectively right in this moment with this group of people that have gathered not by coincidence or by chance, but by your incredible will over sovereignty, over all as your preeminent omniscient. You're over all. You know all. And so we are here together praying to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, thanking you for who you are and looking to lay ourselves down, worship you, and give you all that you deserve. This morning, we come to you with serious things to advance the mission in the name of Jesus. As Alex is going to come and preach, I pray you be with him, be in the midst of every word that he's saying, push through, holy God, by your spirit in the reading of the scripture and the teaching of the word so that we can receive what you can only give us. I pray, God, for us at the end of our time together that, God, we will walk out better 
that we would be stronger in you, that we would again see that you are serious about many, many matters, and we are thankful. Thank you for everyone being here. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the team of people and the tech team supporting behind the scenes. Thank you for all the singers, the musicians. Thank you, God, for all those in the lobby doing the work that they do to support all that goes on so that we can come to worship you together. I pray you will have your way to you, God. Be the glory, great things you have done and will do in Jesus' name and God's people said, amen. Doors fling wide, I see glory as I run inside your throne room before.
I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, and I, I welcome you to this morning wonderful church service. I believe and trust that we are not going to go out uh, the same. I pray that each one of us is going to be attentive and to God's word. And I just want to thank God once again for this wonderful opportunity he has given to me. And uh, just want to say thank you to the pastor, Pastor Babi, and the entire pastors, deacons, and leaders, and the entire church uh, for allowing us to come here and for allowing me to stand before you. It is an honor. And I'm so thankful. It is something I'm not going to take for granted. As I said two days ago, it is uncommon. Yeah. Or I can say this is God doing this. Because if I look back where I'm coming from, it never crossed into my mind that one day I'm going to stand here before you all here in the U.S., so this is God, and I believe and trust that God is going to do whatever he has purposed in his heart through us all. So today we are going to look at uh, how do we respond to persecutions when persecution comes. How do we respond as children of God? Because it's very, very important. It's during this time when persecution comes, that's when your faithfulness will be tested. It's during this time when your faithfulness, your genuineness will be tested. It is during hard times because everyone can quote verses. Everyone can talk about God's word. But during hard times, when difficult times comes in our lives, how do we respond? How do we respond? Because it's during this time, sometimes you may feel as if you are not called by God. Because sometimes God may be silent when you are going through difficult things. It reminds me of Joseph. When Joseph was accused and he was thrown into prison, God was silent. He was silent as if he is not there, as if he is not concerned, as if Joseph is not in God's program, but he was. So it's during times like this, that's when your faithfulness here will be tested it's during times like this, that's when we will know if we are serious with God. It is times like this. Because everyone can say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Even Peter vowed to follow Jesus Christ. But when he saw how Jesus Christ was treated, he changed his mind. He changed his mind and he said, no, I don't know this man. I don't know this man. I don't know this man. So, who oh say, how as children of God, we have to respond when troubles comes. And troubles will come, most especially if you decide to stand on the truth. Troubles will come. Persecution will come. If you stand on the truth of God's word, if you compromise, I think the devil, it doesn't bother him. Those who compromise the truth of God's word, I think he is not bothered, the devil. He doesn't care about them. That's what I can just say. He doesn't care about them. He cares about those who stand on the truth of God's word. So I believe and trust most especially if you want to advance uh, the missions, the kingdom of God, persecutions will come. 
So how do we respond? We can see in the life of Paul, Paul, he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. But prayer did not stop troubles coming in his life. Troubles came actually, he went through a lot. He went through a lot. So it is prayer with understanding. Prayer with understanding. Because prayer without understanding, when troubles come, will take you away. You will fall. You will fail when troubles come. So it's prayer with understanding. Prayer with understanding. What type of understanding? Because this guy is Paul. You can tell that Paul, during his ministry and his walk here on earth, is so beyond the curtain. He saw things beyond this world. He saw something. Because if you are going to move with these eyes, you will be disappointed. And if you are going to interpret things according to what you see with these eyes, you will be disappointed. Because it is not every time how things are, in the physical realm, it doesn't mean how that's how it is in the spiritual realm. It reminds me of Elisha and his servant. When his servant saw the soldiers, the enemies, he was so much troubled. And Elisha was just okay. He was just okay. Actually, he prayed for him, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of this young man, and he saw that on his side, they were surrounded with angels. They were surrounded with angels, and he was so much encouraged. This is the reason why we don't walk with what this eye sees. We walk by faith. We walk by what he has said in his word. And we don't walk by what we feel. We walk by what he has said in his word. How do we respond? Yes, we have seen that Paul, he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. We are going to read some few things from the book of Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'll begin reading from verses 18. Through 27, I'll just go fast, fast, because I just want us to look into the book of Daniel also. Verses 17. I'll just begin reading from verses 18. Seeing that many glory after the flesh... I will glory also, for you suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exhort himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, how be it? Where in so ever any is bored, I speak foolishly. I am bored also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death oft of the Jews five times received, I fought stripes save one, which is that nine. Thrice was I beaten with the rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. 
in journeys, often in perils of order, in perils of robbers, in perils of, or by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils by the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness in watchings often, in hunger and thirst in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, besides, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, I am not, who is offended, I bear not. This is Paul sharing the things he went through, and you can tell that he received all these things victoriously. Victoriously. Not defeatedly, but victoriously. He went all these things because he saw something beyond the curtains. He saw the heaven. He saw the Jerusalem. Beyond that, he saw Jerusalem. He saw something. This is the reason why Paul, he was able to stand all these things. And he continued preaching. Even in prison, the episodes were coming out. And he is saying, even if you are bound, the gospel is not bound. The gospel is not bound. He was preaching out of prison. How do we respond? How do we respond? Yes, casualties are there when it comes to this. Casualties are there. Others, because of what somebody said in church, I am going to stop going to church. I am going to stop going to that church. Because of this, it is going to prove if you are genuine, if you are serious, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. We are going to look at some serious things also out of the book of Daniel. How he responded when he was in Babylon. How do we respond to persecutions? How do we respond when troubles come? And when the enemy fails to bring you down, we are falling into sin is concerned. If he tries to persuade you, if he tries to push you to fall into sin, if he fails, he proceeds to another weapon, which is persecution. And if he fails with persecution, he's going to proceed to the weapon he likes using. He's going to lie against you. Even Joseph, he tried, he pushed, he could not until he lied against Joseph. And he was thrown into the jail cell. Even in the life of Jesus Christ, false, false witnesses were there testifying false things against Jesus. Even during the time Stephen was stoned, false witnesses were there. Even Paul, before he became an apostle, he was there testifying false things. That's what the enemy uses. How are we going to respond? How are we going to respond? We say even Stephen, how he responded, he responded, Father, forgive them, for they know not know what they are doing. Forgive them. How do we respond? Because sometimes we respond by revenge. I just want to revenge. I just want to revenge. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Forgive them. How do we respond as children of God? We are going to read from chapter 6, book of Daniel, chapter 6. Chapter 6, verses 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes we should be over the whole kingdom and over this 
three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princess might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the all realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error of fault found in him. He was a faithful man. So they tried because these were crooks, thieves. Because of Daniel's presence, they could not steal. So they thought to come up with something in order to bring Daniel down. So they searched, they couldn't find anything. I'll continue reading. It happens sometimes where I'm coming from, even in Africa, where I'm coming from, if you are faithful, among unfaithful, you have to be strong. You have to be strong. They will try by all means. Even at the working place, I have seen things like that happening. You want to bring the Bible here? This is the wrong place for you. This is the wrong place for you. You want to bring godly thing here in this company because here we steal. Here we take things. So if you want to bring that, this is a wrong place for you. They can even warn you. I have seen people being changed because of the circle where they have entered. Even them, they decide to become like one of them. But Daniel he stayed in Babylon for so many years, but he was not corrupted by Babylon. He stood, he stood his ground, Daniel. I'll continue reading verses 5. Then said this man, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against, against him concerning the law of his God. Wait a minute. So these guys, they knew how serious Daniel was with his God. So they said, if we do this, we are going to get this man. They knew that Daniel is not going to back down. They knew that Daniel is not going to bow and worship man. They knew. How well do the heathen know you? How serious you are with your Jesus? How do they know you? Because they knew that Daniel is not going to back down. And worship man is not going to do that. They knew how serious he was. It's very, very important as children of God. You can see serious things out of this. They knew that Daniel, if we go against his God, is going to, to stand. And we are going to have opportunity to bring this man down. Then these presidents and the princesses assembled together to the king and said, Thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdoms, the governors and the princesses, the counselors and the captains have consulted together a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or God or man 
for 30 days, save of thee, O king. It shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish. They are manipulating the king here. And the king was happy. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. He didn't know what he was signing. He regretted later because he loved Daniel. Verses 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it, that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and patience which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. And as he did aforetime. So Daniel, when he heard that the decree has been signed, he went into prayer. What kind of a man is this? He knew what was signed, that whoever is going to pray during these 30 days will be thrown into the lion's den. But Daniel went into prayer after he heard. You know what? Daniel was more concerned about his prayer life more than his life. He was more concerned about his prayer life more than his life itself. And he had to open the windows towards Jerusalem. And he started thanking God. He started worshiping God. He started praising God. You are holy. You are good. There is none like you. You are my God, I love you so much. As he was worshiping God, he was caught by these guys. And they were happy. And they thought, now we got you, Daniel. We have finished you, Daniel. Daniel, he faced Jerusalem. Every time those who were taken into captivity... They were facing Jerusalem every time they prayed. They were facing Jerusalem. Even here, Daniel is facing Jerusalem, not Babylon, but he was facing Jerusalem. And it tells me that Daniel's heart was not in Babylon. Daniel's heart was in Jerusalem. He was in Babylon, but not of Babylon. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. When you pray, are you facing the world and expect something to come out of this world? Or are you facing heaven? When you pray, where do you face? Daniel's heart was in Jerusalem. That's where his heart was. He saw something this eyes cannot see. He perceived something this eyes cannot see. He saw something, Daniel. This is the reason why it is difficult to bring somebody who has seen something beyond this earthly realm. It is difficult. Where your heart is, Daniel's heart was in Jerusalem. And during this time, Daniel did not use Babylonian wisdom in order for him to fight uh, persecution, in order for him to address and handle this persecution. He did not use Babylonian wisdom 
but he used heavenly wisdom. What wisdom are you using? What wisdom are you using? The wisdom we have is God's word. It's God's word. So he did not compromise because if his heart was in Jerusalem, or I mean in Babylon, he would have compromised God's word. And look at this man. He did not change even, he did not change even the place of prayer. He went at the same place. He did not change. He did not use wisdom and say, no, no. Okay, I will just try to go and find a place somewhere else. He went at the same place. He went at the same place. He short to say, he is saying, I fear God more than I fear the king. More than I fear death itself. It is God I fear in this world. And he stayed at the same, at the same place. And when he was caught, Daniel, he did not try to talk himself out. He was quiet. When he was taken into the lion's den, he was just quiet. He did not say anything. I know the king wanted to deliver Daniel, but he could not. Because what was signed, he could not change. He tried and he couldn't sleep. And Daniel himself, he was just, he was just okay. He did not try to talk himself out. He was just quiet. He was just quiet. There are times even us in our lives, we just have to keep quiet. And allow God to speak. And allow God to intervene. Because many of the times we have a tendency of trying to help God. He was just quiet and waiting. He was ready to die. He was ready to die. Are you facing Babylon? Are you trying to use Babylonian wisdom or even the wisdom? Where is your heart? Because where your heart is, that's where your treasure also is. If your heart is in this world, when troubles come, when things are tough, because do you know that the enemy has a tendency of using these physical things to distract us? Things attached to us, materials and whatever, sometimes it can go and take away some things maybe from us and sometimes we get shaken so much because that's where our heart is. That's where we are attached. Because if it is heaven, that's where your heart is. Above, you can see the heavenly Jerusalem and you are convinced that you are just a stranger in this world. We are just strangers. This is not our home. Our home is in heaven. We are just passing through. This is not our home. We are just passing through. We are just strangers. We are just strangers. So if you can't see that, if you can't see beyond this world, it will be very difficult for you to stand when hard times come. It will be tough. Paul he saw something. This is the reason why he was able to stand his ground. Are you going to stand with the Babylon and judged by God? Or are you going to stand with God and judged by Babylon? Daniel chose to stand by God, to stand with God and judged by Babylon. And we all know what happened. We know how God intervened for Daniel. He prayed, he prayed and nothing happened. God did not stop those guys to proceed with their, uh, their plans. God allowed, he was just quiet. 
Sometimes when we go through things, it doesn't mean God is not aware. He may allow some things to happen. He may allow things to happen. He allowed these guys to come up with something. He allowed them to take even Daniel to the king and say, no, you just have to do this. We have to throw this guy into the lion's den. God was quiet. God came in when Daniel was thrown in the den. That's when God showed up. As I said some time back, we are not going to see the power of God in our comfort zone. God showed up when Daniel was in the den of the lion. God showed up. The king of kings showed up. The Lord of lords showed up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? As it is written, all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The one who gave himself on the cross of Calvary, the soon coming Savior, is here with us. And greater is he who is in us than the one who is in the world. So if we have this understanding combined with the prayer, we will continue moving forward no matter the situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, because God is with us. The fountain of life, the living word, the living water, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one who died and he rose on the third day, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is with us. We are not going to fear as children of God. We know God is with us. We will use his word. When tough and hard times comes, we will use his word. We will say, all things work together for good to them who love God, who accord according to his purpose. All things work together for good. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the circumstance. All things work together for good. We all quote those verses in hard times. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I'll just read some few verses. I'll be done. If you have God's word, turn with me in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Seek ye those things above, not the things down here on earth, not the things in Babylon, not allowing our, our lives to be touched with so many things of this world. So many things of this world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have to set our affections on the things above where Christ is seated. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's very, very important as children of God. Very, very important. So Daniel did not allow his prayer life, his prayer life to be shattered. He did not allow that. He had to protect. Prayer life is very, very important. Prayer life is very, very important. If the enemy managed to kill your prayer life, you are going to be a powerless Christian. 
If Jesus Christ himself was God, 100% God and man, he was, without sin, he was praying. He was praying. Even during the time before his crucifixion, he went into the garden of Gethsemane. He prayed, he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. How about us? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, 7 there, oh, in the days of his flesh, he offered up prayer and supplications to him who was able to hear him. With a strong crying and tears, he, he prayed to God. He had to seek God's face. So prayer is not going to take away all the troubles, but prayer will help you to go through all these troubles triumphantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Because problems sometimes may rob that joy from you, that peace of mind, troubles of this world may rob those things. But if your mind is up there, if your mind is focused, if your mind is on Jesus Christ, you have joy even in the midst of trouble. You have peace in the midst of persecution because your mind is not here on earth. We need to be heavenly minded, not earthly minded. We need to be heavenly minded because if we are going to be earthly minded, we cannot do anything. We are not going to impact anybody if we are earthly uh, minded. So may the Lord God Almighty help each one of us. And we have seen how Daniel responded. How Daniel responded. Is your heart in Babylon? If your heart is in Babylon, you will compromise God's word. If your heart is in Babylon, in the world, you compromise. By all means, you compromise God's word because that's where you belong. You want to protect yourself. You want to manipulate. I have seen people manipulating things. They don't want to, to be in trouble. If they speak the truth, they think that they are going to be in trouble. So by lying, that's when they feel like uh, comfortable and protected at the same time. But that's not how we're supposed to be. That's not how we're supposed to be. We have to speak the truth because it is him. But if our heart is here on earth, we are going to manipulate things, even do there, because that's where your heart is. I have seen people doing contrary things, even the following day, they join the choir and start singing as everything is okay. And if you are living in sin, it is very, very difficult for you to have confidence, for you to have even that passion uh, towards the Lord Jesus Christ. If sin is in your life, it's very difficult. It cannot happen. But if you are walking, you are pursuing where righteousness is concerned, you will continue moving. You will continue moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Where your heart is, where your heart is, is your heart in this world or is your heart up there where Jesus Christ is? We have been taught to set our affections on the things above where Christ Jesus is. Even desiring, when are you coming to take his church? We want to go and to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us, we just want to go and be with the Lord Jesus Christ because it is far more better than anything. It is far more better. Even today, Lord, come. If it's to come, come and take us. We are ready as the church. So may the Lord God Almighty help uh, each one of us. How do we respond? How do we respond to troubles, persecution, 
It is prayer. It is prayer and understanding. Prayer and understanding. Where you can see beyond the curtains. Where you can see things these eyes cannot see. May the Lord God Almighty bless his word. Shall we pray? Gracious, merciful Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the gift of life. We give you glory, honor, and adorations. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. Help us, my God. We cannot do it without you. We cannot live a victorious life without you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we just want to live for you, my God. I know when troubles come, that's when we will know if we live for you or for ourselves. Help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray. Amen.